Valentin Todoro here from Alir. Today, we're going to do a PeopleSoft test framework recording from scratch. Uh, we're going to do this recording in my folder. Again, whenever you do any kind of building, you want to start everything within your folder, right? So we're going to right click and create a test. Okay. You can also create a test from a little white piece of paper and test or up here at the top, create test. So they give you three options of where to create a test. Uh, and you got to make sure you have a folder selected. If you still have a test selected, you don't have those options, right? So you can only create tests underneath folders, not underneath other tests, right? So we're going to go ahead and go right click, create a test. And the first thing within a test we want to do is we want to save the name. But you'll see here that you cannot type in the grayed out field. What you want to do is click on the little floppy save drive at the top and you want to give it a test name. And test names in the, the system are unique. Um, so you want to make sure that you, especially if you're kind of playing around in the sandbox, you want to give it something, maybe your initials at the end, something unique. Uh, if you try to create a test that's already in a system, uh, like new test, it already exists, right? Because it's a unique name, it's a unique key in the system, so it won't allow you to do that. So make sure that if you are just playing around, um, you give it your initials, or if you're truly recording a test, maybe say in a PERT PO 005 status listing report. Okay. Limited to about 30 char 32 characters here. Um, so be cautious of that. Okay. And once you've defined the name, you kind of have the placeholder and the high level definition of the test created. And what we can do now uh, before we go and do anything in the test is let's do the actual recording against the application. Okay, and to do that, what we want to do is we want to initialize our recorder. Okay, and the recorder is going to be in this little uh, red circle. So we want to go ahead and click that. You'll give it a second. It's actually starting up the extension within Chrome. And this is, of course, assuming that you followed our other videos and you've installed PDF correctly and you have the newest web driver that corresponds to your web browser. Uh, you'll see that this little extension is now floating, okay? Uh, within the extension, you have some settings that you could do, but um, the main thing we want to do is we want to launch our browser. And when we launch our browser, what's going to happen is it's going to take us right to the PS sign-on page automatically. And that's because we have the, um, the login URL already superimposed within the runtime options, okay? So we've got PTF recorder running. We've got our environment. The last thing you want to do, and you'll kind of see it's it's showing this down here at the bottom, that the browser is hooked. We've initialized it. Press record to start. We're not actually recording yet, right? Even though we pressed the record button, the, the red, and we've started the explore the, the little wizard, we want to actually press the actual record on this, and now we're actually in recording mode. And you'll actually see that at the bottom as well. PTF is recording now. And when it's in recording mode, everything you interact with, it, only what you interact with gets captured, okay? So if you want to uh, put in user and password, which of course we have to do to do anything within PeopleSoft, we're going to do that. And you're going to use a system just the way that you're used to using the system. You're going to put in your user, your password, you're going to sign in, and you'll actually see on the floating window, those actions are actually recorded on the little window. When we press stop at the end, they'll actually flow to the test script themselves. But we're going to continue in here, okay? Um, you can use whatever method you want to get to your components. You can use the tiles, you know, change the home pages. I'm going to, or, or the search bar, the global search. You could use that as well, of course, but I'm going to use the nav bar on the side. I'm going to navigate nav bar, main menu. Uh, since I did status listings, let's go to purchasing. Purchasing. Uh, purchase orders. Let's go. I think it was in reports. And in here somewhere there, uh, it's uh, status listings right here. Okay. So I'm just using the system normally um, like I would any time. Okay. I'm going to add a new value. I'm going to call this a PTF test one, two, three, because I think I have some run controls in there already. All right. Now there's a few additional features within PTF. Maybe I want to verify that these fields were blank or I want to verify that uh, English was the defaulted value on the page. And you can do that with the PTF recorder. You can right click on any object and you'll see that there is actually a new menu on your right click called the PTF recorder. Uh, this, if, if you are used to re old recordings, used to be a floating window. Now it's actually buried within this menu. Um, you can add additional steps. You can add uh, verifications that yes, that field does exist. 
that's the one thing we, we can do, especially if a page is, is customized. You want to verify that fields exist. Um, you want to verify or you want to scrape values off it, especially if it's something like a requisition where you're creating requisitions and you want to grab the new rec ID that's generated off the page. You want to do a get property and it will put, put that requisition ID in a variable and then you can use it downstream. So you could use the get property. But for us, I want to verify. I want to verify. And all you do is you just click on verify. It's going to float this little window. And this is abstracted. It's not part of your recording and interaction with the PIA itself. It's a window that floats as part of the extension. Okay. And it, what it does is, what do you want to verify? I want to verify that within this language field, there is a text, which is a combo box drop down, of the value ENG. That's a translate value for English. And I want to save. So it's actually saved the step. And then on playback, it's going to verify that, yes, that field does have English in it as expected. Okay. All right. So we're going to continue our recording now. We're going to select uh, what date from the 20th through date. Again, using the system like you're used to. You can use the lookups or, of course, you can just type in these fields, US001. Uh, supply, yep, supplier ID. I don't know what supplier ID is. Let's look one up. There is a supplier and a buyer. I think BP1 is, yes, BP1 is, Kenneth is in there. Okay, we want to save. Um, and I'm actually not going to record the run. You could go through the run and do that, but we're actually going to do that manually on the script so you can see how you can build a script uh, via the recorder or you can manually uh, do it on the actual script itself. So at this point, we're done with the recording. And you'll see if we kind of float our window back and come back to our little extension that all of these steps are recorded as part of my uh, my playback and my recording. And I want to get them into this um, script right here behind me. So what you want to do is you want to press the stop. If you pause it, it won't do anything. It's just pausing. You really want to stop the recording. And as soon as you press stop, what's going to happen as you kind of saw everything was flowed back to the, the back of it. And now you can close this little recording window. Okay, kind of go back to PTF and you'll see that now I have all of this, which is part of my script, okay? And now what we can do is actually create an additional line to run the process. Um, and within PTF, you have kind of built-in functions and procedures, um, this obviously being a function where we can run processes, for example. So we just want to say process after the page save, which was the last thing I did. During the recorder, I'm going to do process, run, okay? Uh, and when you double click in a field, there's these little helper uh, pop-ups. So what is the process name? Uh, I believe the process is called POX. I think it closed already. POX 4020, I believe, is the process name for the status listing, okay? And it kind of formulates the, the syntax for you, so you don't have to know it's PRC name equals. So these little helpers are great for it pops up. You put in the process name and it fills it out. And the same thing goes for these parameters because there's some additional things I want to do when I run this process. I want to wait till the process finishes. Okay. And there's a little explanation to what it means. I expect to, this to go to success or I want to do a negative test and I wanted this to go to no success based on the values I've set in the parameters. Right. Uh, but for us, we want to go to success. We also want this thing to post all the way. So it's going to do these checks on playback and you'll actually see it. Uh, and I wanted to click refresh, which is the refresh button at the top every five seconds. Okay, so I've, I've selected what I want to happen on top of just running the process. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to place all of those um, as part of my parameters in my test. Okay, um, there's additional cleanup we can do here. Uh, one of the things which is not set up on my test is I don't have uh, browser. I have browser start, start login as part of the configuration, and we'll get to that in another video. I'm actually going to switch this to browser start. Browser start login uses the runtime option, username and password. I prefer this method uh, to use the user and password on the test itself, and I'm going to re-enable these steps. Uh, we can read what the test is doing as well. So it's browser starting. Browser frame set focuses um, the cursor on the page. We text set value um, something to the user ID field, which is VP1. We set the password. We button click submit. Then we go through the entire navigation, nav bar. We click on all the items. Uh, we go to the page and then within the page in the, in the component, we set, um, the, we check the language. This is a verify step right here, okay? We set the dates, the business unit, 
you can see right here it clicked through to select the vendor the buyer all the way to the page save okay uh, and we can manipulate the values at any time maybe we want this to be one two three four five maybe we want to change the dates maybe to from 2024 so you have full capabilities and if you miss something you can select the step you want to record underneath start the recorder again and then it would inject those missed steps within the test you don't have to restart recording from scratch every time okay and at this point our test is complete we can go ahead and save it um, it won't you won't be allowed to play back until you save and you can see that there's a star here because it's not been saved so go ahead and save your test it's going to return an id from the sequence that's what this id column is and as soon as it's done we can go ahead and play a test uh, this test should work okay it might be missing a, a step in here because I went a little fast, a page prompt, okay? Uh, and if you don't want to use the nav bar, there are methods to manipulate that. Um, so for example, you can go directly to the component by doing a page prompt, putting the menu.component.market in here, and then an action, okay? Let's play this test and see what happens though. Uh, and if you've done any kind of modification to a test, like I just added this line because I know that it sh this sh you should submit the page after you put in the run control ID, you'll see that there's no ID in the sequence right here and the test is unsaved. So if you try to go play on the green, you got to save this before you play back. And you can just say yes and it's going to save it and then run the test, okay? And now that I'm running the test, it's going to start up a new tab right here, you can see. And this is the log. It's going to keep track of everything that happens during that execution. You can, of course, I'm, I'm not touching my keyboard now, and it's going to run through that process. It's going to sign us in. Okay, it's going to use the nav bar to navigate to that component. It knows how to focus on these regions, so it knows to go to purchasing. Um, there we go, status listings. As soon as it's done that, it's going to go add. It's going to do one, two, three, four, five because we added a new one and it will fail because the page prompt was not expected on the page because this page is built slightly different and i'm betting yes this one has a slightly different name to the add button <laughs> sometimes page prompt okay won't work so we have to change that to just a button click and then name actually id equals this okay and the way i found that i kind of rushed there uh, is you can always use the browser inspector. So right click on the object, go to inspect. Uh, you can use this little targeting tool to inspect the page, which will give you the DOM objects on that page, which is the button itself, the name of that button and the ID of that button. We can target, and that's how PTF executes. It's actually targeting those objects on the page itself, okay? So I've made a small modification to my test. I can just save it, play back again, and this time it should work okay. Okay. So the recorder is not perfect in any sense. You still have to have an understanding of the script itself, but it's a good way to record a lot of the objects so you don't have to manually put them in there yourself. Okay. And sometimes being a little slower with your test recording uh, will yield a better test. I'm kind of trying to show as much as possible in a condensed time frame so you could see as much as possible. Um, as fast as possible, okay? And again, if you don't have to do the nav bar, you can go directly to the component and target the component up here at the top, but we're just using the nav bar for this time. And you see this time, it does click the add button because I targeted it, okay? Okay, it did the validation. It's gonna go through these steps. And now when it, after it clicks on save, one thing you'll notice is uh, we, we never recorded clicking the run button, right? That was that function that I invoked uh, manually by selecting it on the test. So it's saved and now it's gonna invoke the process run function and it's gonna go through the process. So this is something that's baked in. It's gonna look for POX 4020 was not, it looks like they named, changed these. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Status listing and now it's 4021, how about that? So people saw this change some, it's, it's fine. So you can see here, it got through, and the log itself will tell you exactly what happened. It's very verbose, okay? It goes to the save. It tries to find the process, and it says, okay, it's not found on the list, and it's no longer exists because it's been changed. So we can quickly go, change our name. And one thing we can also do is, um, which I keep talking about, not having to do the navbar navigation, is we can remove all of this navigation step. Okay, all of this 
is no longer necessary. We can delete it off it, but we still have to get to that component somehow. So what we can do is we can insert a new line and go right to the component. So we can do a page prompt, and now we have to know the menu.component.market we want to go to. Well, that's actually up here at the top. After you get to a component, this is the, the menu.component.market. Okay? There's another way to do to find that by using the, uh, the actual definitions and the metadata behind it. So any of the fields that are within that page, within that component, also hold the menu component and market information. But you can grab it from the URL as well. Uh, you just also have to specify what you want to do within that component. I want to add a new record or update an existing one if it does exist. So one thing we can also do is we can change the data. So um, the run control ID right now is one, two, three, four, but we can do whatever name we want. Test for a specific business unit, US002, US003. So you can name them, whatever. And because we're doing the add update step at the top, what it's going to do is it's going to add new run controls and open up existing ones uh, if that run control already exists. So we, we can manipulate any of these values, whatever they may be, right? So the dates can be uh, altered right here and you can create additional test cases, which are the data sets within PTF to house various data combinations on the fly. So we've made the change. We can go ahead and save or just press play and then yes to the save but I'm gonna do the, the save and then we'll play back and we'll see this thing run all the way through into hopefully a green pass, okay? Again, it's always gonna start that additional tab, which is the log. Each time you do a test, it creates a log step and logs everything that happens within that execution because you wanna use that for testing evidence um, as you go through your testing cycles with PeopleSoft, okay? There we go, you can see that it created a new run control for the new business unit. Uh, it altered the, the through date as well. And again, it's gonna do, and you could use the lookups if you wanted to, or you could use the hard coded value for the supplier and buyer ID to make the test a little bit faster for that purpose, okay? So it's saved and now it's gonna run the correct um, pro, uh, process name, 4041. It's going to scrape the process instance off the page right here. It knows how to go to process monitor. It's going to put that process instance right there. And we didn't record any of these steps. They're part of the function. They're part of the features of PTF. Okay. And if you did customize any of this, there's actually a definition that you can um, declare right before the run that you can tell what the new names of the, the run button are, for example. Okay. And because here we did those additional parameters for success and posted, it's going to click refreshing until it reaches these end states of success or no success or error, posted, not posted. And based on that, it's going to return a green flag or red flag, whatever the test, and see our test is completed. We can see here that we have the green pass, that yes, it is posted, it is successful, it keeps track of the process instance, and of course, all the values that happened during that test itself, okay? Everything you need during that test. So. And these logs are now part of, of the, the folder. You can see them underneath a test. And as you add additional test cases and run this test, you'll have various log IDs. This is log ID six with the user stamp and timestamp of when this test occurred with all the granular information and screenshots if you did invoke any screenshots necessary for testing evidence. So hopefully this gave you a flavor of how to record, modify, and run a very simple PTF test. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for joining.